This is the first of three lessons on grid navigation. This one explains what it is and why we do it, and then explores the idea of convergence. The later ones will look at steering when using grid and the solution of grid problems. Grid navigation is a technique in which, rather than using the normal latitude and longitude graticule as a reference for direction and positions, we apply a square-shaped grid and use that instead. Why should anyone wish to do this? The reason is that, at high latitudes, the amount of meridian convergence becomes significant and causes problems in defining and steering a direction. Let's take a high-latitude situation. We'll suppose that we wish to fly from 70 west, somewhere in Canada, to 70 east, somewhere in Russia. We want to fly the Great Circle track, or as near to it as possible, because it's shorter than the Rum Line. Here is the same situation on a polar stereographic chart. Position A is at 70 west. The line defining true north is the line joining it to the North Pole, that is, the meridian of 70 west. The track from A to B makes an initial track angle of 0 to 0 degrees true at A. So suppose we set off from A using a compass which gives us true north, and keep applying the appropriate drift in order to maintain a track of 0 to 0 degrees true. But as we cross each meridian going eastwards, the direction of true north changes. Relative to the top of the map, that is, the 12 o'clock position on the page, the direction of true north is turning anti-clockwise. This means that our direction of 0 to 0 will also turn anti-clockwise on the map. If we maintain our track of 0 to 0 true, our path over the ground will look something like this. Exactly the same problem occurs at lower latitudes, unless a direct Mercator chart is being used, but is usually not noticed. Suppose that we wish to fly from C to D, which are both at 53 north. The mean track is 090 true. We are using a Lambert's chart. We now have a choice. We could maintain a track of 090 true. If we do, we will still finish up at D, but we will fly the rum line track. If we were to take a succession of fixes whilst flying, but not alter track direction, they would appear like this. However, this is not how most navigation actually takes place. The idea of having a straight line on your chart is that it is supposed to be the track that you are trying to fly. If you wanted to fly the rum line track, you would use a Mercator chart. So most non-automatic navigation is done using the other option. In this, we measure the initial track of 082, and then set off on it and settle into our normal cycle of fixing and correcting back to track. After a while, we take our first fix. There will probably be some cross-track error. This will mainly be caused by changes from the forecast wind and inaccurate flying of headings. This cross-track error will also include a small component caused by holding a track of 082 true, whilst the straight line track has actually altered to, say, 083, but this will be completely swamped by the other random errors. We don't even notice the cross-track position error caused by convergence because it is usually so small at low to medium latitudes. We plot our fix, then use our protractor to make a normal correction to get back to track. We measure the track locally near the fix, thereby automatically correcting for the convergence. During the course of the leg, the datum track will change from 082 to 098 true, but the process happens simply by correcting back to the straight line track on the chart and measuring the local meridian. However, this technique of sweeping the change of track into the normal navigation corrections breaks down at higher latitudes because the amount of convergence becomes too great to ignore. We therefore have to abandon true north as our direction datum. 
and use a grid and its associated grid north on our chart instead. We also have to align our compasses to grid north, not true north, and keep its direction up to date as we fly along the track. But at least now we have a track that can be defined by a constant direction. There are various different methods for selecting the date and direction for grid north, but for the EASA ATPL syllabus, the datum chosen will always be a meridian of longitude. First, we choose a meridian to use as our datum. We add the horizontal parallel lines at suitable intervals, often every 60 nautical miles, but they can be smaller or larger distances. And then we sweep out an arc to draw the vertical lines the same distance from the data meridian and parallel to it. And then continue to construct the full grid. If the Greenwich meridian is chosen as the data meridian, we call it a standard grid. Standard grids are widely used on printed grid maps for the European area. Another favourite data meridian, often used in the USA and Canada, is 60 West. We'll now examine the relationship between True North and Grid North and see how it changes over the chart. We'll start with a latitude and longitude graticule. We choose one particular meridian as the datum. It doesn't have to be the Greenwich meridian, but it is in this example. At the datum meridian, grid north and true north are the same. Now, let's consider the grid line that passes through longitude 10 west. Being part of a grid, it is parallel to the datum meridian. But longitude 10 west will be inclined to the datum by the amount of chart convergence between itself and the datum. A line of longitude defines local true north. Therefore, the difference between true north and grid north at any point on the chart is the amount of chart convergence between the longitude being considered and the datum. This is exactly the same chart convergence you learnt about in maps and charts. If the chart is a polar stereographic, the convergence will be the change of longitude. If it is a Lambert's, it will be the change of longitude times the sign of the parallel of origin, or little n. So this gives our definition. Grid convergence is the angular difference between true north and grid north at any particular point on a grid chart. We've just seen that we can work out the magnitude of convergence. We also need to be able to work out its sense. Is it east or west? There is a logical way of doing so, and it depends on whether the point on the chart that we are considering is east or west of the datum, and also whether we are in the northern or southern hemisphere. The vertical center line represents the datum meridian. This time we have chosen one, which is not Greenwich. Now let's put in all the other meridians either side of the datum. And now we add the grid. We'll start by considering a meridian out to the east of the datum. Now let's look at the inclination of the meridian in the southern hemisphere. Everywhere, except at the equator, it is always further clockwise than grid north. At the South Pole, it is 90 degrees out to the east, and at the equator itself, it is parallel. At any latitude in between, true north is east of grid north by some angle between 0 and 90 degrees. Let's now consider the same meridian in the Northern Hemisphere. You can see that here, the red line, which is true north, is always anti-clockwise, or west, of the green grid north direction. We'll now look at a meridian west of the datum. Up here in the northern hemisphere, the meridian is always clockwise, or east, of the grid line. And finally, in the southern hemisphere, west of the datum, the meridian is always inclined west of grid north. This gives us the pattern east-west, west-east. It is one of those useful mnemonics like D-I-I-D, which we have encountered earlier in the course. 
Remember and use it when solving grid problems. Convergence is annotated easterly when true north lies to the east of grid north and westerly when true north lies to the west of grid north. And it follows this rule. Convergence east, true least. Convergence west, true best. This shows convergence east, true least. True north is out to the east of grid north. So convergence is defined as east. The grid heading is 105 degrees. Convergence east, true least. True should be 20 degrees less than grid. So the true heading should be 085, which it is, as we can see. This one shows convergence west, true best. True north is out to the west of grid north. So convergence is defined as west. The grid heading is 105 degrees. Convergence west, true best. True should be 20 degrees more than grid. So the true heading should be 125 true. Convergence follows the same pattern of conversion of direction as our previous conversions of true variation magnetic deviation compass. But note that it goes on the left hand side of the columns if going from true to compass. So, to give an example, if the grid heading is 090 and the convergence is 10 west, then true will be 100. The rest fills in in the familiar way. And, as you would expect, we follow the same rules when working from compass to true to grid. If the true heading is 100 and the convergence is 10 west, convergence west, true best, then grid must be 10 degrees less than true giving us a grid heading of 090. Now that we can convert from true to grid on the chart, we need to find a method of steering grid direction. This can be done using either a compass or a gyro, as we shall see in the next lesson. Let's summarise this lesson. It is the first of three lessons on grid navigation. It explains what it is and why we do it, and then explores the idea of convergence. The later ones will look at steering when using grid and the solution of grid problems. Grid navigation is used because, at high latitude, the amount of meridian convergence becomes significant and causes problems in defining and steering a direction. We use a grid and its associated grid north on our chart instead of latitude and longitude and we also have to reorientate our compass or gyro. But we are able to define a constant direction for our straight line track. We choose one particular meridian as the datum. And from this we define our grid. We showed that our normal definition of chart convergence is also the difference between true and grid north at any point on the chart. So we can calculate the convergence by taking the change of longitude between the datum and any particular longitude on the chart and applying the normal rules, depending on whether it is a polar stereographic or Lambert's chart. Remember the rule EWWE to work out whether the sense of the convergence is east or west. Remember that convergence is east when true north lies to the east of grid north and west when true north lies to the west of grid north. And remember, convergence east, true least, convergence west, true best. And finally, we showed that converting from grid to true follows the same simple rules as converting from true to compass, but note that the grid and convergence columns go on the left, if we are going left to right from true to compass. That concludes this lesson. We will study steering by compass or gyro when using grid next.